Hey everybody, Graham here. Uh, so, <laughs> what you're looking at is something I ran across late last week that I really just wanted to check out entirely based on the premise. This is the Museum of Mechanics Lockpicking. And what the company behind this has done is they have gathered a whole bunch of lockpicking mechanics from games across the years. And yeah, they just put them all in one, or recreated them all in an easy to find and experience way. And with a premise like that, honestly, how could I not check it out? So, let's see what we're in for. Okay, so this is the lockpicking mechanic from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, adjust the DC and the player skill that roll the 20-sided die. Yep, so uh, let's go with a DC 15 lock, and we'll assume this person is a... That'd be what, probably a bard or a rogue? Oh no. And I got, to, you can't see it, but I got an achievement for that. <laughs> okay. So a simple start. Fallout 1 and 2. I have actually never played the original Fallout or the sequel. I own the first one, I think, on Steam. I just never got around to playing it yet. Uh, looks like it kind of works the exact same way. Okay, rolled a 93. Uh, huh. So how does this work? Ow! My ears! <laughs> okay, I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. It seems somewhat similar to d and I... What? Okay, here we go. Was an... SSI AD&D game, similar to the famous Gold Box games. So, does that make it something like... 1989 would be text-based version of Baldur's Gate, maybe? Well, let's see how that actually... Whoa! Oh, we've got time here. So we need... Match the lockpick to the active tumbler. Uh, we're definitely going to fail this first one. Nope. That didn't work. So let's try again. Okay. Uh, that didn't work either. Alright, so we've got these teeth on, on it. But that's on. Hmm. Interesting. How do you tell what the active one is supposed to be? No, no, I want to get this. No, that didn't work either. Let's see if there's screen full of lock picks, three tumblers in the lock, as well as a fuse burning down as a timer. Must match the appropriate lock pick with the active tumbler before the fuse reaches the end. As further complication, each one has two ends, one which is upside down, so the player must mentally flip shapes to find the one that matches. Okay. So, and that. We need one that looks like this, but on the, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out, so how do I, oh, there we go. So it goes left to right. I've never run across that system before, that's actually pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, <laughs> something I'm always on the fence about whether or not I want to try. Move the cursor into the target area using the mouse or left 
stick and then press the D key or the A key to rotate the lock. Keep it aligned with the target area until it is complete. Okay, so we need to just do this, I think. Interesting. Oh, the Mass Effect lockpicking minigame. I've played a ton of Mass Effect, and I can't for the life of me remember the lockpicking game off the top of my head. Okay, guide the triangle cursor to the center of the circle before time runs out. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't actually remember that being in the series. So I wonder if this is something maybe from the third game, which I've never actually played. As unfortunate as... Oh, I messed up. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. So you can actually... Yeah, I missed the part where you can move side to side. So that's Mass Effect 1. I really don't remember that being in the game, but it's been a few years since I played the first one. Uh, Mass Effect 2, so this is probably going to be the code one. Oh no, uh, pairs of identical symbols. That's just an easy memory puzzle. Okay, Wizardry 6. <laughs> what was that? No, 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 I want to get this one. Uh, there seems to be no skill at all to that one. It's literally just hope you get the timing right. Uh, Gothic. I think I have the playable teaser in my Steam library, and I've never once touched that. Left and right. Yeah, some of these lockpicking minigames are very strange. Okay. All right. Yeah, that one's easy enough. That's somewhat similar, I think, to the Oblivion one. Uh, I played very little of Risen 3, but I... Played uh, some of Oblivion, and I seem to remember the lockpicking minigame being similar. Oh, here we go. Skyrim, Fallout 3, and 4. I've played a bit of Fallout 4 and a, more than I care to admit of Skyrim, so... Yeah, easy enough. The uh, sound design on that one and on the Wizardry 6 one way down there are both a little... <laughs> A little bizarre. Okay. Okay, so yeah, somewhat. Yeah, this one's a little finicky. That took way longer than it should have. Ah, an Akronox. Use the arrow keys and to change the digit. Press space to try that digit.
that interesting. Very interesting. So, that's all the role-playing games. Looks like we have a few immersive sims and other genres. Now, this one right here actually is a good example of why this intrigues me so much. One of the very first games I ever played was Thief 1. And you know what? I can't seem to get it on my computer. Like, get it working. I own it on Steam, and it just does not seem to function well on modern computers. Let's see. Hold down the left mouse button to begin picking the lock. More complicated locks. 50% done. Okay. Interesting. But that's the thing. Something that's becoming more and more of an issue is the historical preservation of games. That's what made GOG.com so successful when it first started, was it was the only place you could find games from 20 and 30 years ago in a playable state. Some of those have moved over to Steam now. As an example, I <laughs> recently picked up Zork 3D, Curse of Monkey Island, and Riven, which are more games I played when I was a kid that I honestly never thought I'd get to play again. I have no idea what happened there. I did literally nothing. <laughs> but that's the thing, is... If we don't want to forget and lose everything that we've had, there needs to be an effort to preserve older games. Um, when was the last time anybody played a King's Quest game from way back, <laughs> way back when? You know, Steam just released a bunch of pixel remasters for the Final Fantasy series a few months back, and all the old versions of those are off the platform if you didn't already own them. I don't know, I just feel like if we're not careful, we're going to get to a point where all these games that we have, we know and love now or grew up with are not effectively not going to exist anymore, either because there are no physical copies or the servers shut down. There we go. That's an interesting one. I actually like that as a nice take on the uh, Skyrim style one. Oh boy. Rotate it till the ring starts moving. The uh, hit detection on this is a little weird. So you just hold it there, it seems, until it... I guess there. Yep. Okay, interesting. I can honestly say I've never used a lockpicking system anything like this before. And that should be the last of it. Ah! <laughs> Yikes. Alright, so now we're in other genres. 
Oh, look, the first Splinter Cell. I, I haven't played the Splinter Cell games in ages. I wonder how they hold up. I uh, guess the direction on... All right. There we go. Dust and Elysian Tail. I remember hearing about this game, but I never actually checked it out myself. Press the buttons on keys corresponding to the arrows shown. My ears. Okay, Alpha Protocol and Sleeping Dogs. I vaguely remember hearing things about those games. Uh, use the arrow keys, control or mouse to line up the tumblers with the lock line. Then click to lock the tumbler. Okay, I see. Uh, probably don't have enough time to finish this one, but uh, it's going to be tight. Oh, narrowly missed it. All right, now that we're doing, let's try that one again. Oh, I see, and so you want to, oh, uh, never mind. It adjusted. There we go. King's Heir, Rise to the Throne. I've never heard of this game before. Uh, okay, uh, click the circular plates in order to retract the bars. Bars underneath other bars can be pulled back, but any bar on top of another cannot be pulled back. So that one works. That works. No. Two. Almost. There we go. That one's actually really cool. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that one in another game. Move the hair clip until the lock moves slightly, then hold space for the A button. Alright. Trying to see where this starts moving. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of just seems seems to me that the easiest way to do this, as long as you're not on a time limit, is to just pick a rotation and try the whole, like, just the whole length of the hairpin at that point. No. I keep getting my buttons mixed around, though, so. Yep. Yep. There we go. There's that. There's two. No, no, there. Someday. Someday I will hit the right buttons in the order I intend to. It's also uh, inverted on the uh, y-axis, which makes, makes sense given what's going on, but is also throwing me off for some reason. There we go. One more. I don't know if this is what the developers had in mind when they designed this system originally. There we go. Just three more. Wow. 
Wolfenstein, The New Order. There's a game I really need to play, because I've heard it is very good. And I think I own it, I just never actually got around to playing it. Uh, apparently that was correct. Testament of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's talking about the Frogware Sherlock Holmes games. Interesting. Arrow keys to bend the bottom lockpick to match the shape of the upper diagram. quite that steep because this one uh, that should be correct I think yes okay I needed to hit the space bar which they forgot to mention in the um, instructions all right What? Now this is an interesting thing. Is this just a short video? I think it is. I can pull and hold down to begin. And this. I think this is just a very short video. Yes, it is. Okay. So this was, uh, this was the Museum of Mechanics. Uh, it's honestly, it's clearly designed to provide inspiration to developers looking for new ways to handle lock picking in their games. But at the same time, it's a nice look back at how things have been done over the years. Everything from tabletop role playing games all the way up to stuff that came out in the last few years. And honestly, it really does get me thinking about what... Are we going to need to see more things like this so that we don't... I hate to use the words forget our heritage as video gamers, but... I mean, what other, <laughs> what other medium has this problem? Like, we have books that are hundreds of years old. Movies have a proud over almost, what, a hundred... 130, 140 year history now, and we still have film from back when that started, but I don't know, it just, we're gonna hit a point eventually, if nothing's done, where we won't have any actual old video games. It's given that a lot of them were on floppy disk or on CD. I mean, my PC doesn't even have a <laughs> have a CD drive, and that's great, but, you know, I can't play anything that came on a CD unless it's also available for digital download. It's just something to think about. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this trip down memory lane more than anything else. I hope you had as much fun with this one as I did, and I hope I gave you something to think about. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.